Glenn Johnson is one of Manitoba's notable all-time baseball umpires, and his dedicated commitment earned him induction into our Baseball Hall of Fame as a builder. Glenn, how did you get started into baseball umpiring back in the 70s? Well, I came from a very sports-oriented family, and I played a lot of hockey back then. Uh, found out I wasn't really going to be a great baseball player, so I loved the game so much. I thought, you know, what's another way to get involved and stay involved? And you know, I just started umpiring little kids' games, and it just kept going from there. You never looked back. Never looked back. You umpired at all levels in national, international tournaments, including the. 96 Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now, what stands out for you in all those experiences? It's always been the people. Uh, I met some amazing people that I never would have ever met in my life had I not been able to umpire baseball. Um, I think it was always about, you know, trying to be the best I could be. It was still a way of competing for me, uh, to just try and go out and get every pitch right and get every call right. And, and all the while through, I think I, I made more friends you know, there than I ever would have made. I've got friends. Even when you, even when you didn't get the call right. Yeah, exactly. I still consider them friends. Of you know, course. Air quotes, but yeah. good show. <laughs> you were about 35 years old when you worked those '96 Olympics, and that made you the youngest umpire at those games. Did you have any feeling of intimidation in that atmosphere? Yeah, absolutely. At the beginning, there's no doubt about it. You know, we're in Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, and right. you know, 50,000 people and. It was, uh, it was pretty intimidating, you know, Louis Tion was coach in Nicaragua and um, yeah, it was pretty intimidating early on, but then I guess, you know, once we got the balls and strikes going, I realized I kind of belonged and, and uh, kind of went from there. And the other guys were fantastic. Some were of the they? veterans, yeah, some of them, it was like their third Olympics and, yes. you know, really nurtured me along and I think that's all part of the brotherhood of umpiring, so it was great. You also had a chance to be a plate umpire. Uh, for an exhibition game between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Team Canada Nationals. Did those hot shots question your calls at all? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I remember David Wells, who okay. was a pitcher for the Jays, was chirping me quite a bit from the dugout. He's like, you know, Johnson, call some strikes. We want to get out of here. You know, so uh, I remember Wells. He was, uh, he was always a character. Did they have a good crowd for that? Uh, they did, absolutely, yeah. There were about 20,000 people, as I recall, and uh, it was quite a great event. I really enjoyed that. that really let me get a taste of what, you know, working in the big leagues would have been like. Glenn was a true builder for umpiring by developing, instructing, and supervising any number of umpiring clinics. Did you enjoy that type of involvement, Glenn? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a great way for me to get to, to, to give back. Um, you know, all the great people that invested their time to teach me how to be an umpire. Um, it was really what gave me the opportunity and got me better. And I just felt it was appropriate to, to do that when I had a chance. And, you know, had a chance at the national level to try and develop the program to make sure that we were building the grassroots, uh, which is still something we need, mm -hmm. more umpires all the time. So, but it was a really great way, again, to, to just kind of give back. Did you have any plate umpiring tendencies? I have to ask you this. For example, some umpires were known for calling a wide plate, giving the pitch to the corners, but up and down they favored the batter. Now, how about you in that respect? Yeah, I would say I, I was probably not dissimilar. One pitch that I think the pitchers didn't uh, didn't agree with me on, they thought was a strike and I didn't, was that one that was down and in at the knees. I just always thought that was kind of unhittable. You know, and I'd always give them a little bit on the outside in, in exchange for that. Mm -hmm. But I think until the pitchers figured it out, I wasn't <laughs> going to call some stuff in there. Uh, they were a little upset sometimes. <laughs> Have you ever been hit or hurt by a foul tipper, for example, getting by the catcher? Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. taking a few, taking a few in the hands and the, and mm -hmm. the fingers typically, uh, you know, ended up with a couple of broken fingers and uh, you learn pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> Get How about up. your protection? Did that vary and develop over the years? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I started with an outside protector, an inflatable oh, yeah. outside protector, you know, and finished with a really tight inside protector that was, you know, of much higher quality. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it absolutely changed over the years. You could take a few in the, in the chest and belly and not really know about it. <laughs> Among your awards, you were the inaugural recipient of Baseball Canada's Umpire of the Year honor. That was back in 93, and I'm sure that's something that you're very proud to acknowledge. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, that was the Dick Willis Memorial uh, you know, Award as well, and Dick was a great pioneer in umpiring from, uh, from BC. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really humbling. Um, I think it was a great opportunity, again, to recognize umpires nationally you know, for what they did and what they contributed and, you know, it's still going today. So, yes. yeah, I'm really proud that, that, that Baseball Canada chose to do that. 
You've also had a spell in baseball administration. You've been president of Baseball Manitoba. That was for three years, and you served on, on the board of directors for seven. Have you seen much change in how we govern baseball now? Yeah, I think so. You mm -hmm. know, I think back then we were at the early days of trying to build these elite programs and, you know, programs that would always try and feed, you know, the best of the best and give them greater opportunity to, to do national and international tournaments. It was kind of early days. And, you know, I think now two things have happened. There's a lot more investment in grassroots and infrastructure, more stadiums, more fields than we had back then, um, and also at the elite level. So I think both ends of the spectrum, you mm -hmm. know, have kind of grown. Whereas we were, we were trying to break into that, you know, in the early days when I was there. In minor baseball now, uh, do we have uh, one, two, three umpires working in a game or just one? <laughs> yeah, so it, it varies, which is fantastic, actually. Yeah. The, you know, the growth and the development programs have been, uh, have been excellent. You know, sure. and we're able to use more kids and, you know, bring more people, boys, girls, into the programs, which is, which is awesome. And what does it mean for you to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame? Uh, it's it's an amazing honor. It's something. I need. It's not why you do it. It's not why you start. I didn't start at 12 years old thinking, you know, I'm doing this to get into the Hall of Fame. And I think for your peers and and people that you know have known me for a long time to decide that I'm worthy is, yeah, it's pretty humbling. Any regrets along the way? Anything that? Uh, you no, would I like think I wish. Time? Yeah, no, I think I wish. You know, again, I just wish I had more time. Yeah, I always yeah. wish I had more time to do more things. Um, but you know, I think I'm kind of proud of of some of the legacy and and you know many of the friends and people that I've made through baseball. Winnipeg's Glenn Johnson elected as a builder into the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame.